Hey, welcome. I'm Lee Kellogg and thank you for joining me today. We are going to explore using a few rubber stamps that I got sent from my friends at Paper Artsy along with just a few, a little, I had little bits of ephemera and a little stencil that I wanted to play with. So I picked just a few things to make a very non-traditional Valentine card. So let's go play around with some stamps, some old paper, some vintage paper, some inks, and see what happens. All right, so let's get started on working on our Valentine card and dishing out some more ink here, because I had a thought what I want to stamp a couple of things in. So today I'm using Distress Ink, Ranger's Old Paper. I'm going to use Archival Sepia. That is a very old label, by the way. The newer one may look like this. I'm going to use probably Library Green and maybe a few other colors. I am playing with part of a stencil from Paper Artsy, and I'm playing with some Paper Artsy rubber stamps. And I'm grabbing a stencil brush because I am going to stencil this background. I grabbed a brown one even though this is green, but that's all right. And because I want this um, tag outline to show up here, and I may make this a little darker because I'm finding this, this is going to be a little light, I think, for my preferences. Yeah, that's a little light for my preferences. Usually I like old paper, but I'm already working on old paper, so I think I'm going a little darker. Look and see if I can find that, but it don't, no matter because we're going darker. Because we want our tag to be on this old paper. And you can see how old this paper is. It says Napoleon and Antecedents. And it's, um, I don't know, something about French. It was a tiny old paperback. And you'll notice I'm going round and round. I tap tap on this and then just round and round on the paper. Very nice. Perfect. See, that worked beautifully. Then I'm going to wipe this down because that ink will come off on that on your hands and stuff. Um, stencil brushes are flat tipped, flat tipped there. And um, they work with the plastic stencils, the metal stencils. They are extremely useful. Okay. I've got some new stamps that I have never stamped before. So I'm going to grab a scratch sheet of paper so I can see what they look like. Move that out of the way and I can just work with this with the brown. Nice. I didn't get a full inking, but this gives me a good idea of what's on there. And they are cling out. I don't feel like totally taking off the cling, the cling backing right now, removing the paper. I feel it pretty comfortable just doing them this way. Nice. I think that's a freshly inked pad, judging by the amount of ink on there. Let's try this again so we can get a good. And it's like if you don't know your stamps before you use them, it helps to play with them and see what's see what's on there. Oh yes, I've got great ideas for this guy. This just excites me because you can do all kinds of funky things with this the way this one is. Oh look, horns, I like it. <laughs> So this is a fun branch, a two-piece branch. I have no idea what set these are from. These are just random. I know they're paper artsy. They are stamps I've, I received from them in a stash. So I am all about, you know, let's let's play. I have, like I said, I have an idea for my card. This is another fun one. Just to see, once again, background, fabulous background. Ooh, I've got all kinds of ideas for this guy. This one's going to be fun. Um, all right, I'm back to this. It's sort of like this is, it came together so far. We'll see if my idea works. It, um, you know, we get these ideas and we're not, sometimes we're not too sure how they're going to turn out. 
and I am inking rubber up, which is, even though my demo is there, my quick demos, I was not doing that. This is what I prefer to do. And I'm sliding my acrylic handle on there and just doing a quick press to give myself a good, a good stamping. Excess ink comes off on the scratch paper. And I am going to color these little tips all in red. Maybe I should have done that in red, but you know, you never know. You never know what's going on. Um, sometimes your ideas are like, oh, I like this, and then it, then it changes. But that's the plan at the moment, and we will see how it comes out. I'm holding this these branches just to see sort of trying to visualize what I want to do with them and how I want them to look. And the way this stamp is put together, this is super, super easy to alternate these. This is like rosemary. Oh, sweet, okay. And, you know, I find sometimes that the pieces, the artwork comes together. It's like you get a little idea and then it comes together all by itself. It starts telling you what to do, how to create it, how to make things happen. I'm grabbing a baby wipe to clean up my work surface here. This is just a piece of tiling marble that I picked up at Home Depot or Lowe's ages ago, glued some feet on feet on it and went to town. I originally thought I was going to use this this funky number this one but I think I'm gonna pass. At this moment I am liking this. I feel like this is a very strong image. I may outline the tag. I may not. I may just leave it and draw my red in. So I'm gonna go grab some cardstock and a red pen to finish up. All right, here we are. I have a um, Jelly Roll pen. It says Moonlight 06. It's a red, um, nice sort of red. So what I'm gonna do is color in these guys. It's sort of like something a little darker, but I think this'll, this'll do the trick. And if your jelly roll stops working, don't press harder because if you press that little roller ball inside, it will never work again. So give it a good shake. In fact, this one's looking like it needs a, a good shake. Um, I just sort of shake it so that I force the ink down to the tip. Um, a little red acrylic paint would work. Perfect Pearls. I'd almost want a fine tip applicator if I was using Perfect Pearls. I think some of the ink is, is picking up on this tip. And especially that the um, the distress ink is probably not quite dry. That one takes a little longer to dry than the archival.
some of these. It may be that I'm putting on a couple of layers because I know I did some of these, but their red is sort of gone just dark. But I like it. So I like that a lot. That's very fun. Um, I'm sort of wanting another design on this though. Even though I've got that done, it's um, now I'm going to fish out some stencils and see what I think about a little design. Is that that's like, oh, I don't know. Hmm. This is this is how you work things. You just sometimes you look at them and you're like, oh, that needs something else. And you grab, you grab the item, grab the color, and away you go. And this is, I'm grabbing an ink pad I have not played with yet. This is an old color box. It says limited edition. It's calling it butter. A nice yellow color. So let's see what the stencil does with it. Oh, that's awfully heavy. So we'll be careful with that. Because I don't want a lot. I just want a little design in there. So I'm doing this very lightly. I'm rub going around and around in circles, just little bits, because I can see where my wreath is through there. And you can see I've added just a little bit of design. And the cool thing about doing this is you can just pick it up, put it down, put design where you need it, put a pattern, I mean, and, you know, it works. And I haven't had to reload my brush. So there, oh, I'm so much happier with that. That is nice looking. And for me, that just, that adds those, those little dots, just added a whole bunch of depth to this tag. So this is coming together beautifully. I'm super excited about this, as you can tell. So I like to put things away as I work. So I'm getting stuff put away. So I try to keep my workspace fairly clean. Um, I've got some cardstock sitting here that I think this is going to work on. And I don't know if I need a sheet of paper under it. I may just mount it like that. And... I think I would call this the gaiety of the French soldiers, which is what this says right here by my thumb. And then you can put your sentiment, Happy Valentine's Day or whatever in there. If um, if I can find my photo corners, that would be very cool to use photo corners. So we'll see if I can go find them. I know I've got some somewhere. It's a matter of where. But overall, I am totally thrilled with the way this um, quick little Valentine card has come out. So thank you for watching today. I greatly appreciate it that you hung around till the very end. Again, I'm Lee Kellogg. You can find more work at LeeKellogg.com or on this YouTube channel. Please do give me a like and a subscribe to the channel. Greatly appreciate that. If you have questions, pop them in below and I will respond to your questions. It may take me a day or two, but I almost always answer them. Um, so there's the card finished. I decided to position it at an angle. I used double-sided adhesive, top and bottom, to tape it down. One of the things to note when you use double-sided adhesive on old paper is that you need to burnish it before you peel off the backing, if it's one of those that you have to peel off the backing. Um, and when you're using a tape runner, make sure that you apply some pressure so that it gets down because this old paper doesn't always like to adhere well. So that's just a little tidbit. But anyway, there's my sort of non-traditional Valentine card. So have fun, get out there, subscribe to this channel, subscribe to my newsletter, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.